Our next presenter is uh, Yolanta Galneka, uh, also from Poland, Young Digital Planet. Uh, and her presentation is entitled, The Importance of Early and Special Needs Education, A Chance for Technology. And, uh, oh, it's up. Great. Yolanta. Yes, just a moment because I have to switch to computer. Mm -hmm. My name is Yolanta and I represent Young Digital Planet, which is a company producing e-content and digital e-publishing, uh, educational content in, di in digital form. And as you know, uh, we already have lots of publications about uh, the way the children learn. Um, oh, and it's not working. Oh, now it works. <laughs> Magical touch of you know when the IT guy just approaches you know it's a, yeah it, 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 it's enough. it's enough so um, we already know that uh, children really are very active learners and they are natural learners and they have this natural curiosity they really love to learn and they are like this little scientist they approach the world in a certain could be said scientific way. Um, but the approach of the schools, the, the way the schools operate, the way they are taught right now, it's killing this curiosity. It's killing this natural love for learning. Uh, children really love to, to know how the world operates. And they really love to, to figure out the world and to be able to apply to it and to be able to, uh, to be in motion with it and to be able to control it, just the way the adults do. But sometimes the, the fact that the adults are so omnipotent, you know, it really puts them down. So it's, it's been proved that peers learning is actually something really at an amazing level. You can, you can try and attain what the other peer has already attained. You, do, you can try to, to simulate it. And so the peers level is a little bit less intimidating. And EduCensus was supposed to be, EduCensus, which is the program for early education and special needs education, was supposed to be this missing link, something that would revive therapy sessions and to make them more fun and engaging. Because therapy, you know, you need to grab attention of the, of the child. You need to let them forget about their problems. And to, they, they are coming to the therapy sessions for battles battling something they are not capable of doing. You know, they want to learn something, but sometimes it's a really hard process. So we also needed to improve the connection between pupils, between students and therapists and teachers. And we also wanted to respond to children's needs. So we wanted to find something that, you know, will take the anxiety away from the teaching process. Uh, they, the children are really anxious about constant testing and they fear failure, uh, they fear punishment, they fear disgrace. That, those feelings reduce their ability to learn. So we needed to design a product that would take the pressure off but retain the educational values. Something that would make it fun. And within this process we learned a lot of stuff. So computer with its impersonality is actually a great tool that gives a chance for everybody to test themselves at their own pace without being judged. They also allow to consolidate knowledge because the practice is really possible and repetition is very possible. Uh, when the children have the chance to test their hunches, then they actually grow stronger and they learn to rely on themselves. They learn to rely on their minds. This is very important. So children really want to be able to act like adults, but they feel intimidated, as I said. So because peers are better in that aspect, we needed to create a creature, a kind of link that would uh, associate, uh, connect the children with the computer. Also to make the computer less impersonal. So we designed alien creatures a really funny and helpful creatures. We call them speak speaks or talk talks because they are called muftaki from, from the word 
to move it, which is to talk, to speak. And those creatures were supposed to, to, to kind of uh, attach themselves to the children, accompany them during the learning process. As you can see, they are a little bit strange. We thought they would be really funny. They were supposed to be trustworthy, but a little bizarre because they were alien creatures. As you can see, they do not have hands. And the graphic designers didn't really notice that fact. I mean, they designed them in such a way and they thought that that would be fine. But as it turned out, children are very empathic creatures. And they were really, really worried about the, 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 the talk talks. So they started to ask questions. How will they brush their hair? How will they brush their teeth? How will they play with us? How will they be able to drink milk if they have no hands? So they were so preoccupied that we actually had to change the whole graphics design and we had to apply hands. As you can see, those creatures are everywhere. And so the, the workload was really uh, extensive. The same happened with uh, all the creatures in the, uh, in the program. We created them, again, to be a little bit disproportionate, to be a little bit funny, a little bit twisted, you know, with, with, funny, with funny eyes and so on, and then with funny lips, which you will see later on. And we thought that was really to make it nice and funny. Well, we forgot about one thing. The, the program was addressed also for the people with impairments, with delays. And all those children with impairments thought we were making fun of them. And so we had to change everything and design them in a completely different way, without disproportions, without the twisting. Here you can see the limbs. We had to really smooth it out. Because as it turns out, the children thought that it, it wasn't well, they, they didn't really find it funny. So we, as you can see, we had to redesign almost entire program. Trying to make activities more attractive, we have created scenes and pictures that were really quite crowded, as you can see. But we thought it would make it really nice and, and very interesting for the discussions, and it will put the, the whole fire, fire truck in a... a in a, some kind of context, so it would be nicer for the children. Well, as it turns out, when it is about a specific problem, and here it was about the fire truck, about the noise it makes, and about some onomatopoeic sounds, it turned out the children really cannot concentrate on that specific problem when so much is around. So we had to redesign the whole, uh, the, the whole graphic as, again, and really clear uh, out the background. <clears throat> Remove all the elements that we thought were making it more attractive. It were they weren't. Well, another problem is that you know you might think that the entire program now is really clean and clear. Well, <coughs> not because the, the program, the product has really uh, multiple designs, and we we found out that it is really impossible to make it all clear and nice because life is not like that. Sometimes we really need to have complex natures of pictures or complex natures of activities because life is what it requires it. Sometimes people, children, need to really um, s s filter the information from the rich background. So we have designed very simple activities uh, that were focused. So as you can see, some of the complex ones still stayed complex. But those that were supposed to be simplified were simplified. We diversified activities, creating some that were focused on learning particular vocabulary or differentiating different sounds that were uncluttered on clear background. children to talk about bizarre stuff. And then we designed 
activities that were more complex, with complex instructions, with, uh, with information that had to be filtered from the richness of the picture. Again, it's real environment it's of the children. into the basket and put the vase with flowers on the table. <coughs> turn off the television set with the red button and turn on the radio. Put all the round items into the basket and hide all the blue ones <coughs> in the chest. What time is it? It is 12 o'clock. What has happened to you? I was riding too fast and I fell over. We studied different methodological approaches and we decided, we found out that only something that is really closely related to natural environment would be efficient. Children really need to be given their space and allowed individual pace and it has to be adjusted to the brain readiness of the children. But they should also be able to control the world, even if it's just about controlling the computer. We designed activities that were very basic. Here, just pressing the button changes the pictures. It's all natural. It all enhances the knowledge about the, about the natural environment. But it also gives a chance to really get to know the computer environment. So they get to familiarize themselves with it. So all the activities are really enhancing all the skills of the children. Uh, they were supposed to be simple and uh, adjusted to the children, but they were to enhance all the levels of children development. <coughs> the, activities, the activities are very natural, set in the real world, with the real sounds and with animation, so that the children do not have to guess and they don't have to second guess and question what's there. Children don't like to be corrected and tested all the time, but they do like to know where they are going. So the feedback is extremely important. How many bees can you hear? One or more? Great! Lots of bees are buzzing. As you can see, the positive feedback is a little bit uh, really uh, worked on and it's com complex, but the negative feedback is just a simple sound, which is totally sufficient. Different sounds are matched here, music and the sounds are very important part of our product, of our programs. Wonderful! Here the animation for the positive feedback. We found that since speech is very rhythmic, so music is a very important part of children's development. So we have included it in all our activities. You're doing fine! And it's not just about instruments, it's about the, the noises and the sounds that appear all around us. The methodology based on natural development resulted in various usage of the program. And recently it has been purchased even for language learning because it turns out that the ontogenetic language development of the natural tongue is a very, very successful and good method for learning a second language. We have also noticed that it has to, the instruction... The with a selective picture and tell so, is there only one possible ending or more? This is the instruction button and we have found out that it has to be designed this way because children are not always ready on demand. So you start an activity and they want to talk about cakes, about gems, about eating apples, they want to talk about gardens and about a lot of stuff and so before they are ready, you know, the, the actual instruction would have been done. So the button had to be developed for the children to actually be ready uh, for the instruction. We have also found out that emotions are very important. And so we have put the activities with the emotions. And they, the emotions are really, uh, they are not judged. As you can see, there is no solution button as in the other activities. Because uh, it is very important uh, for the emotions to just 
be regarded as they are. There is also sound to all this, but apparently it's not playing right now. What was really interesting here, when we were developing the emotion activities, we had to put gender into, uh, uh, into attention, uh, and actually in all our activities. So we developed certain set for boys and the same set for girls. Because girls wanted to see girls, boys wanted to see boys. Then it turned out that children with dyslexia actually read better when the background and the color of the letters is not really, is something different than just black uh, on white or here on green. So we have developed a text formatting where it is possible to pe choose background color, font color, and font size. And so, uh, as a result, you can put yellow letters on a blue uh, screen, which apparently for dyslexia children is much better, and it made it easier for a lot of children. We were also find all the teddy bears and put them on the chairs. We were also first to find out uh, to, to develop the scanning option. Here is the scanning option. You put different seconds, different time, and then the screen is hovering over the the particular figures and just pressing a big button is enough to Great. give the answer. This is a collection of teddy bears, and that is a collection of cars. Another thing, another issue was that parents were really anxious about computer being used a bit, a bit too extensively. Because our product was computer-based, they were already saying, okay, our children spend so much time in front of the computers, so why would we want them to spend more? And so we had to design activities that would join the computer, that would actually put the computer world together with the so-called analog world outside of the computer. So we have designed hundreds of, uh, of worksheets of PDF formats that are printable and that are able to, to make tons of games, drawing games, sequence games, memory games, poems, songs, uh, <coughs> shadow recognition, uh, different application to, to scenery, to, to uh, making scenarios, learning vocabulary, and crossword puzzles, labyrinths, dressing the child, dressing the girl, learning the time, and also a lot of, uh, a lot of manual activities that included very detailed instructions to cut them out and to actually make nice decorations in, in here for Easter. So the, the instructions are very detailed. We also developed uh, exercises, physical exercises, with very clear instructions. Much like a robot. Invite someone else to play. Can we pass the ball to each other this way? So this is basically a computer instruction, but it allows for physical activities. It allows for a lot of ideas for the teachers to implement during lessons. Here we go. First, try to walk, and then clap, like the children in the video. Now lie comfortably on your back. And when you hear the music, march in its pace across the ceiling. What is interesting is as a result of marketing research, we are now accompanying uh, all the digital products with traditional materials, like kaleidoscopes, like posters, like CDs, like uh, side words, like uh, sequences and word games and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of materials. It makes it much uh, more, much easier to sell, so to speak, but also it becomes touchable. And apparently this aspect is really very important still for, for, for people. So what really constitutes good resources for children? Well, I think that's something that will allow for individualization, that will allow for repetition, comprehensible and instant feedback, that will guarantee fun and engagement, will have minimum demands towards child working memory, so the using of familiar concepts, clear backgrounds, not making them second guess, have intuitive navigation, which is also very important, allowing a 
child to experiment on their own. The navigation is really very simple. Once they get to familiar with the product, with the program, they can proceed on their own. When the children can see the results of their actions, so full interactivity. Also, when they can hear their own voice and when they can record themselves. When they have a chance to dance, when they have a chance to sing, play music and recite poems. Hat. Hat. Scarf. Glove. Skirt. Skirt. Cold winter comes and brings us snow. Frost paints the windows. Icicles grow. The roosters loss. The roosters cry, grew and grew. Cock a doodle. Cock a doo. Conversation. One ladybird found out from the flowers. All those that what they adore. Lessons, all those poems, songs were developed by us together with music. You are, you have the ability to sing a song, listen to the song, sing it as a karaoke, and record it a cappella. And there are always activities to the song because it's not enough to just learn the lyrics. You actually need to understand them and and feel them. So, also all aspects of human development need to be taken into account. So we have attached, we have added sign language and lip reading. The sign language is with dactylology, so spelling the, the letters. Uh, also, it is very necessary that the children learn practical skills and those that they, act, that they see in everyday life when the activities are meaningful and refer to the child's surrounding. So then it makes sense for them and then it, it really, they, need, they see meaning and meaning and context are very, very important for remembering. <laughs> Here we are arranging in the same way. The activities are really varied and as you saw, uh, lots of skills and areas of human development are covered. Actually, so far, and the product has been sold to many countries, uh, we haven't found a single um, set of skills that we haven't covered in the product. There are over 4,000 resources in this, so it's really very extensive. I have mentioned the navigation.